not for just one reason, but for many reasons. Uh, they're not only marking 20 years of democracy here in South Africa, but they're also going to be allowing those who were born in 1994, in the dawn of democracy, to cast their ballots for the very first time. You've heard about them. They're called born freeze. They've been a subject of much scrutiny as a, a sort of a test on how far the country has actually come. Uh, they've also been the focus of the IEC, which has called on them to register to vote this weekend. But with concerns looming that there may be voter apathy among South Africans, Ayanda Ali Payne assessed whether or not born freeze are actually keen on voting. We're in a mall in Johannesburg's West Rand, and I'm sure you don't need me to remind you that shopping centers such as this one are frequented by youngsters. But there is another place where IEC officials and politicians would like to see youths converge come this weekend, and that's at voter registration centers. With me now is a group of young South Africans who were born in 1994. They're better known as Born Freeze, and they'll be eligible to vote for the first time in next year's elections. But in order to cast their ballots, they first have to register. And the question is, will they? I will register to vote, and I'll be registering to vote at Constantia Cliff Primary School. I'm definitely going to register. I think that it's important to register. No, I don't. I don't think. I, I don't think I'm gonna register to vote. I know where to register, but I'm not gonna vote at all. I don't think so. My vote doesn't count for anything. I haven't seen any changes, and I don't know where to register first of all. So no, I'm not gonna register or vote. I know where to register, but I'm not gonna be voting. Um, do I care? Um, I don't know. I don't have any feelings about it. It doesn't move me in any way. Uh, no, okay, I do know where to register to vote, but I'm not going to be voting at all. I wondered whether or not they believed that their vote could make a difference. For me, I feel like the government is constructed already. Like, no matter my vote, like it doesn't, like, it doesn't mean anything to them, you know. So I'm just an ordinary person, you know. Whether I vote or not, the government is still going to be doing everything they want to do. Once you voted, then you can actually complain. But if you haven't voted, you don't have a basis to complain. Honestly, no, because like three uh, with apartheid time, there was lots of uh, youth had they had the motivation to go vote for change. The whole country practically had that, so their votes were just all of them together. That's what made it count. Now it's like little groups all thinking should I, should I? All well, this confusion. That's why there's. I don't think it would count because there's no mass movement for us all to go vote. And what of the historically significant concept of one man, one vote? A privilege for which many people died during apartheid. One man, one vote. Hmm. I don't know. No, I've actually never heard it. <laughs> one thing they do know for sure is that the IEC and political parties must do more to convince them to vote. Out of the mouths of so-called babes, the notion that while they do have the right to vote, they also have the right not to cast their ballots. Ayanda Ali Payne, Johannesburg. Oh, man, that, that actually upsets me hearing what some of the, the youth have to say. Please tell me you don't feel that way as well. Uh, write to us. Let us know. Please, are you uh, being part of the Born Freeze? Are you going to go out there and register this weekend? Are you going to be heard? Are you going to be a part of this uh, political situation in South Africa? I hope so. I hope you're not part of the table that uh, Yanda was chatting to. All right, now, born in 1994, a political transition stage in South Africa. This generation will be casting their very, very first vote during this year's national elections. Of concern is that the born freeze show little interest. You just saw it and seem to be completely disconnected to the country's political activity. It seems they would rather pursue other interests than politics. Well, joining us now from our Cape Town parliamentary studios to give us an opinion is Nkosi Kulule Nyabenzi. He is the co-chairperson of the Elections 2014 National Coordinating Forum. Uh, it's good to have you. Welcome to Morning Live. Yes, sir. Welcome and good morning. Oh, I, I was, I, I, did you manage to listen to the insert that we, we just played before, before chatting to you? Yes, very interesting uh, views indeed. It was, and how do you feel? I mean, listening to that, a lot, of, a lot of them saying they're not interested, they're not going to be registering, and they're certainly not going to be voting. 
Well, I think that is what this registration drive is about, to convince uh, those who are not registered to come forward uh, and register, including uh, the young people, because it is something that you, you learn to get into the voting behavior. And uh, in line with the IEC's slogan, I vote South Africa, we should also take it further to say, I vote for the future. Yeah. What, what do you think is making the youth of South Africa, or the, the born free generation, if, as we, we like to call them, so disinterested? Well, I think there are a number of social issues and economic issues uh, that come into play because we know that the higher the level of your education, the better the prospects of you uh, going to, to vote, to, to have that voting behavior pattern. And so young people are influenced by what is happening in their surroundings, in their households, with high unemployment, uh, with a lot of things going wrong. Uh, they need to be convinced that uh, making uh, that vote is going to have an impact uh, in terms of what uh, the future has. So it's all about uh, education, but I think we also need to do more, uh, not just political parties, but civil society as well, mm. to encourage young people to vote, to say it is about the future. Yeah. I mean, you know, from, from, from what I saw from the insert and uh, from who I and I was speaking to, they looked like fairly educated young individuals to me. It wasn't like uh, she was standing on the street corners speaking to people that perhaps have never gone to school. These look like they've been schooled perhaps even at university uh, or, or, or moving into university and they are still completely disinterested. Do you think it's a matter of they are almost oblivious to how far we have come as a country or is it genuinely that they feel that quite despondent to the political situation in the country? I think that they still need to learn. They have not been exposed to the uh, voting um, experience as yet, and so they still need to learn. And I think uh, civil society and, and a whole lot of our nation must be involved in getting people, young people to be interested. Uh, to at least go and vote, and, but also we need to improve the system uh, on how to go and, and register by providing much more information. Young people now are used to technology uh, and, and so we can perhaps leverage on that to get yeah. as much information as, as, as we can to them so that they can be able to understand the significance of mm. that. Absolutely. But of course when the political parties get into play uh, in terms of raising issues that will be relevant to young people to say, yeah. I want to go and vote for that party because they talk about things that I can relate to. Yeah. Well, you talk about technology, but also in your, in your paper, you talk about um, voter dissatisfaction and the need to reconnect citizens with politics. Just on a final closing note, how, how do you make the youth more interested and, and make them realize that this vote is... Uh, this cross that they make is possibly the most important cross they ever make. Well, we, they must understand that uh, they are, their future is what they're going to inherit. Because uh, once uh, they have graduated, uh, young people are going to be the ones who are in control. And so they need to, to hold the ropes. But also, I think we also need to do more. For example, the municipal councils uh, should... Um, waive the, the, the amounts that uh, they charge on political parties to put up posters for re voter registration so that uh, uh, young people can be, we can be saturated with this information. Uh, and then the other thing that we must deal with is the electoral system to uh, make sure that uh, it's not just the po narrow political party issues that are put on the table, but a broader agenda that is going to speak to issues that says this election can make a change if I can go and vote because somebody somewhere is representing uh, my view as a young person uh, who's going to be voting for the first time. Right. Thank you so very much for being our guest here on Morning Live. And, 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 I, and I do hope that's something that we've said, stirred something in the youth that are watching. Nkosi Kulule Nyambezi, who is uh, the co-chairperson of the Elections 2014 National Coordinating Forum in our parliamentary studios. Thanks so much for joining us. All right.